Hello? Can someone let us know if they can see us? <laughs> this is our first live. We don't know if this is if this is live. If are we actually live? Waiting for someone to say something. Somebody please say something. Sorry for being a little delayed. We tried this on the Safari web browser, but oh someone said yeah, it's working. Oh it's working. Thank you, Bianca, and thank you, Kathy. Okay. Hi guys. Hi I'm guys. Start it off how you're supposed to. What's good, everyone? Welcome back to the Strong Sisters YouTube channel. Welcome to our first ever YouTube live. We figured we would kind of approach this one as just like a Q and A, a warm up, a warm up, because we're going to try to do this every single week, and maybe we'll have it geared towards some sort of like topic each time. But we figured we just kind of keep it open ended and go with some Q and A style. So I'm going to be honest. I don't know where I was supposed to look. Just close that computer. <laughs> There's a lot <laughs> happening right now. Okay. All right. Hi. Hello. Constance said, let's talk, yo. All right. So does someone want to hit us up with the first question? We yeah. have a little bit of some mindset things that we can talk about if no one has any questions, but we want to leave it up to you guys first. Yeah. So all we're getting is some hellos. What do you do about histamine intolerance? Okay. So it. Liz. Liz asked, what do you do about histamine intolerance? So that is a great question. And we have a full like Instagram series post. I think that the best way to fight against that histamine intolerance is increasing your kidney consumption. <laughs> so kidney is high in DAO, which can help your body break down that histamine. She looked at me like I was supposed to answer that. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so um, our friend Chris from Instagram said, how are we doing today? We were doing pretty good. You guys know that we made a lot of changes to our diet recently. So I think we'll start with an update on how we're actually feeling yeah. about that. We tried to talk about it in a previous YouTube video, but it's really hard to stay current because we film a few days in advance. So like things change every single day. So we're about to give a current update. Okay. So I am actually doing really well mentally, physically, um, emotionally. I haven't had any real emotional swings. My digestion's doing well, adding carbs back in. But you guys saw, if you watch us on Instagram, you probably saw our story yesterday. My dearest. I had, having... I had a mental breakdown yesterday on the Instagram story. If you guys are missing us on YouTube every single day, we pretty much vlog on our Instagram story every single day. So make sure you guys follow us on Instagram and you can already guess what our Instagram handle is. But yeah. yesterday I definitely had some Wait, really emotions. Quickly. Hold on. We'll get back to every question. Yeah, we will. We will. I'm just going to save them all. So um, I definitely had like a swing of emotions yesterday. And hopefully that's a sign that my hormones are starting to kick back in. So just as a reminder, I have dealt with amenorrhea for over 10 years. And so I've never had normal female functioning hormones. So I don't really know what it feels like to feel normal hormonally. And so this is kind of like a huge experiment for me. So I definitely had a little bit of an emotional swing yesterday, but I feel amazing today. Um, in terms of energy with adding in the carbs, honestly, I think that our energy is kind of taken to like a whole new level. Um, I don't feel any spikes or like mental brain fog or like crashes after our carb meals. And I really think that's because we're doing the combination of whole good quality carbs with healthy quality animal fats. So that combination helps us like reduce a blood sugar spike. Um, we also stopped the fasting. Oh, yeah, sorry. that's true. We stopped the fasting. So we're eating breakfast. So we don't go through the morning feeling kind of tense. Yeah. We never really told you guys that we were feeling tense on fasting. I think it became our normal and we just assumed like, oh, we're in a fasted state. Like I feel kind of stressed right now. She described it as it was like a course set. So, you know, in like the was very like the olden days how they wore corsets so when we were fasting it would feel like somebody had tied us really tight and so we'd just be kind of uptight all day and then by incorporating breakfast and the carbs we've expanded <laughs> so we've like released a lot of stress yeah and it feels really nice it does um but so there was a question the first question michelle i've had really good digestion um i love that i get to talk about my poop with you guys poop talk so i've regularly gone every morning um it is good shape and size. It's brown. Um, there's no undigested food in there. So I am relatively happy. That said, I am not eating anything that is potentially inflammatory to me based on an inflammation test done a long time ago. So I don't know how accurate it is, but I've been really careful. 
handing the mic over. Yeah, so I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I am dealing with some digestive issues right now and we're pretty much keeping our carbs to a few sources. So we've got obviously our animal meats, our muscle meats, and we've got our raw, raw animal fat sources. So we still have our suet, our egg yolks, uh, raw ibirical pork fat. And so we've got those, our, our carnivore animal base with some muscle, uh, some organ meats. But then the carb sources that we've really been adding in are raw milk, raw goat milk, raw honey, berries, squash, and then we've been having some sheep yogurt, but it's actually pasteurized sheep yogurt. And so I'm going to do an experiment starting tomorrow because I had it for breakfast today. I'm sorry. Like <laughs> once you buy something, you don't want to let it go to waste. I'm going to start an experiment tomorrow eliminating that uh, pastured sheep yogurt because I think that that could be causing some issues. Sorry, pasteurized. Pasteurized. Um, and sticking instead with the raw dairy. You guys um, know we're all about the raw stuff. Yeah, so I think that that just goes to show that, yes, my digestion was significantly better on carnivore, but it didn't cure everything. It didn't fix everything. I felt significantly better. Um, but, hey, we're just being upfront that our lives aren't perfect right now, and this is just our crazy little journey to find optimal health for ourselves. So we're going to continue to experiment. I'm not like down in the dumps about it, I think that we will be able to find an approach that I will have more regular digestion. She was down in the dumps about it. And like we yeah, said, sometimes our relationship, we're really close, but we weren't really raised being touchy feely. So like I give her a hug. Don't touch me. But like, that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I touched your boob. Okay. All right. Move on to the next, next question. question. Ever um, look into heart rate variability and carnivore? Have you? Um, so I have an aura ring. And I'm going to be honest, I haven't used it in about over eight months. And to be honest, having an aura ring sometimes adds like anxiety. So like add sleep anxiety because explain what an aura ring is. So an aura ring is a ring and it tracks your heart rate variability and it tracks your sleep cycles and your sleep stages. And so sometimes if I'm wearing the aura ring, it just causes additional stress. So like I wake, so let's say I have a bad night's sleep. I wake up the next morning, I see my sleep data is bad. And therefore that just like puts me kind of in like a negative mindset. So I haven't been using the aura ring for quite some time. And like, honestly, my sleep was fine. I just didn't really need that reassurance of like, yes, I got two hours of deep sleep. I just kind of was going more in tune with how I was feeling with my sleep. Well, the heart rate variability part of it. So I, so I haven't tracked my heart rate variability in a long time. If you have any, if you guys have, write that in the comments because I'm interested. Yeah. So George or Jorge, I don't know the pronunciation of your name. You, I've talked to you back and forth a little bit before, but you said, let's talk about coffee. So okay. we'll talk about coffee. Okay. We um, don't drink coffee. We used to be like really into coffee and she was pretty, um, what do you call addicted to it? I would say like the I was, energy. I was the really reliant on the caffeine. Um, yeah. So our transition away from coffee started in keto. We got into mushrooms. So we were taking like um, cordyceps, which is a kind of a natural energy or so they say. Yeah. Um, I know that sounds ridiculous, but it really helped us get away from coffee because we would heat it up. We got it from Four Sigmatic, it's the cordyceps. We would heat it up and have it as our like warm drink in the morning. We totally understand having that like ritual in the morning, you know, something that you enjoy. And so that was the thing about coffee that was the hardest thing to let go was like, oh my God, I just really enjoy having that hot cup of liquid in the morning. Yeah. And so that we transitioned to the yeah. Four Sigmatic and then we just eventually transitioned out of that. And the reason is she, again, here we go with the inflammatory test. She showed she was inflammatory to it. Also, I think it's bad if you can't go, okay, for some people, probably not, but yeah. we have, <laughs> we were very attached to it. So getting away from something we were very attached from was important. Plus, I um, had digestive issues with coffee. Coffee definitely triggered some digestion issues. And I was a very slow digester of the caffeine in coffee. And so I noticed like my sleep onset was really affected when I would consume coffee. When I removed coffee, my sleep onset improved almost immediately. So we personally don't feel like we need coffee, but if you are someone on a carnivore or carnivore-ish diet, and can tolerate it and you enjoy that ritual in the morning, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. No. You've always got to do you. You yes. know that's what we're all about. I missed a question from Francis. Have you read the fifth vital sign? No. What is the fifth Please vital sign? Please send more information. Yeah, what is fifth vital sign? Um, 
have you how have you been dialing down your workouts that's a good question by a seal yeah so we oh, you guys to, know we were all about the weights i mean think about our name right strong sisters we have really we grew so much confidence and like empowerment from strength training so this is not easy mentally but i think the quarantine is like the perfect timing for this because it pulled us away from the gym so we used to go to like our local crunch gym and at the gym you have endless amounts of weights right you can go as heavy as you want and you can do all the exercises that you want and now we are limited to our garage workout gym which bumping them yeah it's bumping the queen marshmallow owns that marshy she's the what? gym police these days yeah and so that has really forced us to hold on that was a no she's on her her bed over there can you see her Oh, you can't see her. Hold Where on. She? Hold on. She's there coming. There she is. She's coming. All right. Anyway. The queen is coming. What were you saying? So shifting out of the gym and into our garage gym has forced us to do a number of things. I would say the biggest thing is the reduction in training intensity. So we do not have as much weight in our garage gym as what the gym has. And so we're reducing like the CNS activation. So for example, if you do like a 315 pound deadlift, versus like 185 pound deadlift, like the effects on your CNS is going to be drastically different. So we've definitely reduced our intensity. We also used to follow a three day on, one day off, three day on, one day off, three day on, one day off, yeah, you guys would, get it. So some days we work out like six days a week. Yeah, I some have. weeks we yeah. get to six days a I week. I think we got really caught up in it all and we never intended to overexercise. So a lot of you guys were commenting when we were talking about our amenorrhea journey and saying like, girls just stop working out. It's so therapeutic for us to work out. So we never intended to overdo it. It was just like, I really like this, therefore I'm gonna keep going. Um, so it has an interesting, I think the question was more about like how we felt dialing down. It's been a challenge. It um, really has. But we know it's necessary and it would be really silly to just keep like driving our bodies into a wall. So if you're somebody who also realizes you need to take a step back, maybe try some different um, forms of exercise that are more therapeutic. Like we're really into walking, literally like the slowest pace possible. Um, and we're getting into yoga. So that's, I hope that answers that. And honestly, something that helps my mindset on it all is like, I won't be away from strength training forever. It's just, I need to put my priorities first. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, need to, I need to like um, keep my priorities straight and realize that me continuing to like strength train really hard is going to prolong this operation turn ovaries on healing and manorrhea journey. I can return to it in a more balanced way at the end of all of this. Which, by the way, we if you follow us on Instagram, you know we named our ovaries. because oh, yeah. And I think there's something to really talking to your body. Yeah. So <clears throat> this is Susan Ruggetti. That's Shaw Day. Hey, Shaw. Spelled S-A-D-E with an accent over the E. And then, so here we have Olga. Yeah. And Ladasha. So L-A-A. Okay. So now we Oh no, I it. lost where I was. All right, hold on one second. Getting back to the top. If you, if we miss your question at any point, just send it again. <laughs> In all caps. Okay, wait, wait, I saw it. No, no, no. No, I saw oh, it. Okay. Let's talk about okay. copy. Okay, okay, hold on. Um Okay, what is have you noticed any difference since you have incorporated carbs yet energy sleep? Oh, Fee, you missed the beginning of our conversation. So I don't know how to approach this. So um, we, already addressed it. we already addressed it. It's in the beginning of this. The answer is yes. Feeling honestly really good. Um, are, oh, this is good. Uh, Helena, are your cheeks always blessed naturally? Yeah. So this is something that we've been trying to figure out. <laughs> she looks like she puts on powder every day. I promise you guys I don't wear makeup. Um, <laughs> I don't, I, we don't know. I've had this for a really long time. And Can we move it this way? I'm sure. like having to really contort myself. Um, and so we actually did like an egg experiment. We thought maybe I was reacting to eggs and we removed eggs and it didn't change anything. So I think this is just, my body is natural. Like, uh, uh, what is it called? I don't know. Over the summer though, she actually, even though we're really white, pale, she can get really tan. And so she just becomes a big freckle. So yeah, y'all sure see, see like soon. my freckles will come out and will pop at you. Yes. Okay. Keto marathoner also loves kidney. Um, 
what did Dr. Saladino think of your diet change, Daisy's journey? So we talk to him a lot because we're working on a cookbook with him. And so we have kept him updated. And you guys have probably seen that he's also incorporated honeycomb and um, he eats a lot of honey or so he says. Yeah. And so actually he's known about our hormonal imbalance for quite some time over last year. And when we got our blood work done with him, he actually recommended that we try adding carbs in just to see how it was affecting hormones. And at the time, we weren't confident enough to do that. We didn't feel like we had been carnivore, zero carb, without toxins um, for long enough to really feel like our bodies would respond well when we introduced them. So we ignored him. Um, so to answer your question, he is supportive of it, and he's really helped us dial in on which ones to use in terms of being the lowest toxin. So that's why we tried making that video about um, toxins and carbs because we've been back and forth with him about what he suggests. Yeah, so it's not, we're not just like shitting into the wind at this point. She swears. Uh, sorry. Um, there is some reason for what we're doing. So he's supportive, but I think like if he wasn't supportive, um, we would definitely question ourselves a little bit more, but at the same time, we really do feel like this is something that's gonna be best for us long-term. Um, and I think that next question. Oh no. Okay. It's there. Do you supplement with vitamin D? Uh, we do supplement with vitamin D. I know when we told our YouTube channel that a while ago, people were like, the silly doesn't work well. It's literally, it's in the winter here. We do not get enough sun. And so we're just like trying to hit all of our bases to be completely honest. Don't know enough about that in terms yeah. of if it's effective or not effective. We choose to supplement with it right now, but over the summer we'll probably phase it out. Yeah, we, we have a, we have a goal this summer to great. become tan. So uh, I, I got a long way to go, but that's the goal. So we'll be getting our daily dose of vitamin D in. Cool thing though, um, if you watched our salmon row video, we have an entire video dedicated to salmon row. Um, last summer was the first summer in my life that I ever was able to tan and not get sunburn. So before coming into carnivore and kind of, I guess if you want to say putting my autoimmune condition into remission, I would burn and my rheumatologist would tell me that the sun is my enemy. And so I would, I would, it was horrible, but increasing our consumption. She would literally be against the wall. <laughs> don't let the sun touch me. Guys, I would wear, I would wear like, um, just, I would be completely covered and increasing our consumption of salmon row. It's, I butcher this word, it's the, azan um, you got it? Astaxanthin, Astaxanthin, Astaxanthin is an antioxidant has shown to help um, improve your sun capabilities, and so I'm excited to be tan. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Next question. Wait, wait. You move too fast. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Um, is there an alternative for chicken feet? It seems to be legal. So are you talking about for your broth? I'm like sure broth? if it's for broth, if you are looking for an alternative for chicken broth, sorry, to make feet. the wiggly jiggly broth, a great ingredient is pig's feet. Pig's feet have like excellent amount of collagen in them and they will ensure the wiggly jiggly. So try to find yourself some pig feet. Otherwise you can really just, you will find success um, using your beefy like bones it she doesn't make broth she doesn't know what she's talking about so no if you want the, <laughs> if you want to ensure the wiggly jiggliness you definitely need that extra component so whether that's chicken feet okay pig feet or you can throw in some oxtail so oxtail or pigtail so cow tail oxtail or pigtail because those have a great amount of collagen in them as well all right next question okay all right are you getting hormones checked as you do this and monitoring changes we do plan to get our hormones checked very soon. It's hard with COVID-19 and going somewhere. So yeah. we're going to order a test kit that we can pee. They're a little they're expensive. expensive. They're, they're expensive, not going to lie. We'll let you know. We do have blood work uh, about our hormones from last summer. And those basically just said, like, ovaries said, oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Why are you even fasting in the first place? So fasting was the first thing that we got into in terms of biohacking. And fasting is what led us to keto, which is what led us to carnivore. And so I still, like... Fasting did help us a lot um, in the beginning when we were getting, trying to figure out our autoimmune conditions. We did a lot of um, 24 hour fasts and I do think it was helpful. We really got wrapped up in it though. We yeah. talked about this in a diet culture video that came out this past week where we kind of admit that like, hey, fasting may not have been the best idea for us, but we were so wrapped up in being in ketosis and we thought like, hey, 
to be a successful keto or carnivore person, you had to incorporate that fasting. And so therefore we were like evaluating our health based on whether we were abiding by the rules instead of taking a step back, step back and being like, whoa, whoa, hang on. Fasting may not be the best thing for females hormonally. And so here we are not fasting anymore. I think the fact that we are someone who is main priority is to like lose weight or you are potentially like not worried about losing your period or you don't like your like menopause. Like I don't see a problem with fasting, but we are now kind of thinking, Hey, fasting all the time may not be the best thing for younger females. Us. I don't know. You're not speaking for other people. Yeah. Have you ever tried eating raw honey for carbs? Yes. Every day. Very much like it. Raw honey um, has been my favorite carb that we've added. No questions asked about it. No. Mm -hmm. Did you consider three carnivore meals a day? Um, okay, so we actually didn't try this. Um, we really are confident in the approach we're taking. I have, I have something to say about this. Yeah, what's up? Go for it. So I'm going to look at the question. We have received a lot of comments from people saying perhaps you could have like continued to tweak your strict carnivore diet, or you could have added a lot more fat. You could have done three, me three carnivore meals a day instead of adding in carbs. And I get that, but we were eating Sundays up to like 225 grams of fat a day. That's a lot of fat. Um, and I really think that it's important to take a step back and reflect that like everyone's path towards amenorrhea is different. And so we personally feel like adding in carbs is going to be beneficial for our journey because of the path that we have come to amenorrhea. We have always been in like heavy strength training and working out. And so there's some evidence showing that carb consumption can help for that specific thing. But I think it's just important to consider everyone's paths towards uh, like a, uh, amenorrhea or some sort of condition is different. So everyone's solution out of it may look different as well. So just checking the recent chat, someone just call us to 12 and 13 year old. <laughs> That's fine. Okay. Plus 14. So, um, yeah. All right. Uh, with, all, with all the ovary talk, are you wanting to get pregnant from t Roz? Yes. I have a strong desire to be a mom. It's like an innate calling. I look at babies and children and I want to be their mom. So. I don't feel like, of course I want to have children one day, but like it's not really pressing to me at this moment. But I think that I would be able to just function better as a human with normal female hormones. Absolutely. And so I can't imagine doing this journey by myself. So like, why not do it with my sister? Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know. It's just this calling. Like I've always had this care for others and I think the most fulfilling life is being able to raise somebody that I'm like really proud of. They'll be so different than me. But. Oh, and you guys know that our plans are to have a, we, sorry, we will have a farm. And so like the more hands, the more helper hands we can get. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, oh, that, exactly. They're like free help. Um, also, another thing is that we actually have um, elderly, parents. elderly parents. And so I know I need my kids to grow up with their grandparents so they can take on some traits from my mom and dad. And I feel like it's a ticking time clock. So this, this topic like makes me want to cry. And so that's why this is so urgent for me because I need to figure it out so they can know them for relatively some portion of their lives. Okay. If you're wondering what I'm looking at, I've got the questions on, on the other computer. Um, can you give guidance on how to know how much fat to meat ratios to eat for a beginner? Yeah, it's a great question. So know that this ratio will look different for everyone, but our like initial starting point is always try a 70% fat split. So if you take your daily caloric, you can try lower fat. There's people operating on all ends of the spectrum. And so there's no one size fits all. You have to find what works best for you. Absolutely. Um, a lot of people who do comment, who have a lot of experience in carnivore have said that Ironically enough, they actually started to work towards their weight loss goals. If that's your goal with a higher fat intake, they saw more success eating more fats. So I would really be intuitive with your body. I know it's really hard. We're really still working at that. Um, but if you're hungry, don't not eat. Kevin Stock talks about this a lot. Um, part of coming to carnivore is healing and perhaps you need more food to heal at a certain point. Um, is it difficult to eat a lot more? Or do you feel super stuffed? Girl, boy or girl, we... 
yes, I feel stuffed sometimes, but to be completely honest, I really like, like, I don't know what it is about me, but I really like food and I'm like, okay with eating. So if you think about a full strict carnivore diet, everything is like very calorically dense. And so your meals are typically smaller. So that's one thing that people like about a full strict carnivore diet is your plates are smaller. So you don't feel as stuffed Yeah. with the addition of like berries and squash. Our platas are definitely more voluptuous. So there's more food for the same amount of calories. And I can imagine that that's hard for some people, but you guys need to remember where we were a few, like three, four years ago, we were volume queens. And so we feel like we've been training for this. That's doesn't, that's not the right way to say this, but your girls like to eat can be summarized as that um, it is more volume and you will likely get um, a little bit more bloated relative to a strict carnivore diet. So you have to find your balance. So if you do feel too bloated, too bloated, reduce the amount of squash and increase the amount of honey because honey is very uh, carb dense. It's not very voluptuous. Whereas squash is definitely more voluptuous. Well, if you're doing the carbs. Yeah. <sighs> do you think you two will end up on two separate approaches to food? Okay, so we like live our lives together right now and I know people are like, how are you ever going to start a family if you're together all the time? That's just how our dynamics work and like if my husband doesn't like, if he doesn't understand our relationship, then he won't understand me. So back to the food, probably not because I think it's become clear that we have different sensitivities and so for example, like I seem to tolerate all dairy better than she does. So it's something that we definitely need to work on. We are just so close and cooking together brings us joy. And so we're not being like weirdos eating the same thing all the time. And we it's live just, in the same house. It's so just an activity that we sense. do together, but who knows? Um, have you tried earthing grounding while you sleep? I don't know what that looks like while sleeping. The only time we've ever tried grounding was um, last summer. We just walked in the grass barefoot. Yeah. We <laughs> That's what we But it's been us. cold. It snowed this week, but we will do that more. So, KJ, if you have more insight on that, share that in the While comments. While you sleep, let us below. know. Have you had your cortisol tested? Yeah, mine was high. She is a walking um, ball of cortisol. So, I described this earlier. There's this meme of SpongeBob where he's trying to do everything at once and he has like 17 arms. So, she is that stressed out SpongeBob. And then I am the Patrick Star on the side. It's just like, Dude, what's wrong? So, to be honest, I <laughs> am a little stressed. bit. I'm a little bit concerned on this healing amenorrhea journey because finishing my PhD is something that is going to be extremely stressful. So, I probably have like I don't know somewhere between three to six months left, and it's going to be a grind to finish. And so, I am a little bit worried about the stress and cortisol from that. But that's where like she really helps me. So we go on like walks and just stare at the sun, and she helps me like take a deep breath and realize that, Hey, at the end of this is a farm. So yeah, I am a little bit worried about that, but I'm going to do everything I can to finish while reducing my cortisol. So it'll, it's going to be a balance and it's going to be a challenge, but it's important. So I'm going to do everything yeah. I can. We wake up every day and we say, Hey man, it's going to be a great day. And then we remind ourselves for that farm. So that's like our motto F T F. We do everything for that farm because we just are really, excited about that part of our yeah. life. Um, have you ever considered supplements in helping with digestion? Um, back when we were figuring things out to begin with, we did actually do a lot of supplements. So we took some herbal supplements to get rid of our SIBO. She said herbal. <gasps> oh, so you guys know that I thought it was herbal. <laughs> so we took some herbal supplements to help with our SIBO and yeast overgrowth. Um, I don't remember exactly. It was like grapefruit seed extract and something else. Um, at the time we were working with a naturopathic doctor, we were also taking digestive enzymes and probiotics. Um, right now we are not, but we are trying to get some healthy bacteria from the raw, raw milk. milk that we're eating. So I'd say that's like the closest thing we're taking right now in terms of helping with digestion. Um, should I eat vegans raw or cooked? I have um, no opinion. <laughs> so a lot of people have been saying we need to get a moderator can anyone provide tips or guidance for how we get a moderator? I think they're joking. No, there's someone that continues to ask the same question and it's <laughs> inappropriate. And I've been looking at it and it pops up every two like seconds. Uh yeah, let's do some who wants to be a moderator? Yeah. Have you tried high meat? We haven't. Many people have told us to try this. I want to. 
Uh, have you hit the like button today? That was a question for you. Um, do you, uh, I'm trying to this then. She's whispering to me, keep going. Um, this is tough. Oh, right here. Okay. Did you have Raynaud's? Did carnivore make it better? How long before autoimmune symptoms, autoimmune symptoms got better? That's a really good question. Yeah, so I think that a carnivore diet is incredibly powerful for healing, especially if you're dealing with some sort of chronic disease or autoimmune symptoms. And so that is why, or not why, we enjoyed it too, but that's why we stuck with strict for so long because we wanted to reverse those autoimmune conditions. And that's also a reason why like this new path with adding carbs and produce is a little bit scary because of the thoughts of those symptoms coming back. But we are now approaching adding carbs in our our diet is completely is structured completely differently than we were before. So I think we're taking this new approach a lot smarter, but it took me about a solid, like five months on a carnivore diet strict. I was pretty strict on a carnivore diet to get my blood. My ANA blood work showed negative and I, all of my symptoms were gone autoimmune wise. Yours was about the same time, maybe six months. Um, yeah, I saw a significant reduction in inflammation right from the start. And I think that's because what I was eating on keto was just a bunch of cruciferous vegetables at a certain yes. point. So a lot of bok choy, a lot of um, like a lot of broccoli, green, green muscle sprouts. And so like she was saying, we at the beginning of this now adding carbs back in, we were a little bit stressed that things were going to go wrong again. But when we analyzed how we were approaching our diet in the past before carnivore, it was a lot of nuts, seeds, um, grains, and cruciferous vegetables. And those things are all known to be really toxic in a way. Um, so now there's none of that. So we really have released that fear. But in terms of Raynaud's, yeah. So I would get very cold hands and her feet would get really cold and turn like purple. A lot of people, if you've been on our YouTube channel for a while now, would comment on my hands during our videos. And um, they actually look really good today. So I'm really happy with them. In the past, before carnivore, um, this would pretty much always be really purple. And uh, my ring that I would wear wouldn't fit. And they were very puffy and inflamed. And I would be in like 70 degree temperature and they would be freezing. So that actually did go fully away with carnivore. So I think it had more to do with the things I was eating before. And I think I'll be fine now. I hope that answered your question. Um, I don't wanna let go of my thirsty. There's a you lot of just to. comments. Yes. No questions. Do you ever go off? Oh, here. Okay. Do you ever go off plan for special occasions? For example, eating cake at a birthday party or wedding. You want to start this one? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we've been into like fitness and health and all that jazz for many years. And so I think we did really develop this um, restrictive mindset around it all. And so for many years, we would feel like we couldn't have those things. I think what's evolved and shifted now is that I don't want to have those things. So if I go somewhere and they have cake, personally, I don't have any craving or desire to eat the cake and therefore I don't eat the cake. So I don't, it's not like in my mind I feel restricted. It's that like, I love the food I'm eating and therefore I know that that food doesn't make me feel good and so I don't have it. We don't, we view that food as like Franken food. So like not real food. And we know how our bodies feel when we fuel it with real food. So therefore we only want the real food, if that makes sense. But it's something like if you can eat it and not feel out of control and bad about yourself, which I think is key. Yeah. And like, that's perfectly fine. Like people have to live their lives too. I would much rather have like a bowl of yogurt with berries or like a steak than a piece of cake. But that is just me, me personally. Yes. Okay, next one. I don't know how to start a super chat. Uh, um, who yeah. would win, win in an arm wrestling match? So, so my biceps are definitely bigger. Sarah, Sarah would beat me here, but so Sarah, like we should probably, yeah. Her upper body is a lot stronger than my upper body. I'm like a cheese block. In my lower <laughs> body, my lower body is stronger than her upper body. So I don't know what that makes me. I'm not a cheese block. What am I? I'm SpongeBob, but with she's a thicker SpongeBob. legs. So SpongeBob box frame, box torso with Patrick Star legs. A little bit. 
little bit. Okay. okay, I have no idea where I was in the questions. Uh, and remember, again, if we unintentionally don't answer you, just ask again. Yes. Um, how old are you two? So I am 27. I know that I look like I'm 12. I was carded at a rated R movie last fall, which means that they thought that I wasn't 17 years old. So I'm 27. I'm 23. This is, so, this is challenging. I'm really sorry for the awkward pauses. Um, ah. Okay, how do you, what? What do you do mentally to get your periods back? So this is something that we're experimenting with and it's something that we clearly didn't prioritize enough. I, I talked about this on our Instagram story the other week. We're all into strength training and we prioritize training our muscles, our biceps, our legs, but we forgot about the strongest muscle of them all, which is our mind. And so we really weren't prioritizing any sort of like mental relaxation or meditation to be able to have better control over our mind and have stronger minds. And so now we are incorporating some yoga and meditation. I'm going to be honest, I'm really, really bad. I'm really bad at tuning out of something. So we did a yoga session um, and I like was thinking about my work the entire time instead of tuning into the moment. So I have a lot of work to do on improving my like mental control and improving my meditation. So I know the person who asked this question in particular had objections to how we handle mentally. I think that cutting back YouTube to um, four days a week now with including the live three days plus live that was because we needed to do more for our mental health so it, it's allowing us to spend more time outside um, we we are really into taking like long walks outside with nature if you've seen our instagram stories we basically just film flowers all day and then i mean yes we're on our phone for a second but then we put it down and we sit there and we talk about it so we're not really that good at meditating or like um checking out of our minds but being outside really helps us yeah um, do you eat to saturation or have a set amount of food calories per day? That's a great question. Yeah. So right now we are trying to eat a set amount of calories per day because we are coming from keto and carnivore and I feel like my hunger has been really suppressed and I know that I need to eat more in order to get my period back. I need to be in like a positive energy balance. And so this is something we've actually been talking a lot about to each other is this like, we talked a little bit about this in the diet culture video suppressed hunger signals when in keto and carnivore and then unintentionally eating less. And I understand that that's really beneficial for people who need to lose weight, but I think that we got really lost in that and we slowed our metabolisms down. So it was definitely right. like, there's just this general reductionist mindset of like, how can we eat less? How can we get smaller? And I think that that really negatively impacted our, not only our hormones, but also our ability to know when we should be hungry, when we're full. And so I think that if we tried to do this intuitively right now, we would be under eating. And that's not the main point of this healing amenorrhea. We need to be fueling our body with enough calories so that way our, we can turn our body's fight or flight response off and tell our body and our ovaries, hey, you are in a relaxed enough state that you can have children. Yeah. Yeah. I think that something that's interesting to think about too is that um, it is really hard mentally to eat enough. I don't know if this is a female thing, if it's a male thing, you guys can let us know if you relate, but there's just this kind of mindset around you're probably eating too much or like, oh, you know, you should eat this amount or be a little bit smaller. And so just being transparent, that is something that we're working through because we realize we have to eat more, um, but it is definitely a mental battle. So therefore we are making sure we're eating enough. How tall are you? I'm five, six. I'm five, four point five. <laughs> Good for you. Yes. Good. Um, are you both married yet? They ain't no ring on the single. Single as a Pringle. But I like, fellas, I have to finish my PhD and then I want to start my farm. So if there's any farmer, fellas. I think she's just put herself on match.com. <laughs> no. Uh, Okay, do you girls cycle your carb intake depending on activity levels, or is it more of a set ratio? If so, why or why not for either approach? So this has been, 
I, okay. All right. Let's give a little backstory. So I have always been very performance focused. And so I would very much tailor my eating style. So how I could maximize my gym performance and like maximize my physique. Right. That clearly didn't lead me anywhere in terms of hormones. And so Sarah's been a great reminder and like, we need to take a step back from that and we need to eat for our health, not for our performance. And so part of me really wants to be like, Hey, we should time our carbs, like right around our workouts. Like that'll maximize my performance. But what's the main goal is the main goal to improve the performance or is the main goal to turn off that fight or flight response. So this is something that we're experimenting with, especially because we aren't used to the three meals a day. So like, how do we, where do we put our carbs, our fat and our protein? How do we partition all of these meals? What macro split do we do at each meal? This is something that we're experimenting with and we are so excited to share with you guys once we find an approach that works best for us. But I think that there's no one way fits all and you have to find what works best for you. And so we today, starting today, we um, previously our breakfasts were still a little small. And so today we're experimenting with making our meals more even um, and just kind of seeing how that affects sleep, digestion, how we're feeling. Thank you guys for following this like ever evolving journey. I think that that's important to consider. We're, we're trying to change it up to optimize, to see where we can feel best. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I added Nellie in. She's napping right now. It's her nap. It's all their nap time. So they're not, they'll come later. Um, Do you have advice or thoughts on weight gain when first starting carnivore? I'm two weeks in and my body might be healing, but weight gain is really scary to be honest. Yeah, we just talked about that a little bit. I definitely agree with you. Um, When you educate yourself on, and especially people on keto and carnivore, they really understand the negative downsides of like insulin resistance and being inflamed and being overweight. So it's this really hard thing to manage in your head. And also we're, we're showing these bodies that are quote healthy and they're like a really lean female. And I think that that really skews our mindset on like what actually is healthy. So I totally understand where you're coming from. Um, in terms of waking in the beginning, so we listened to Kevin stock when it comes to this, he really suggests, like we were saying, eating to, um, till you're like satiety, till you're satisfied. I know I say it wrong, so I didn't want to avoid that eating till you're satisfied. Um, and letting healing occur in the beginning and then maybe reanalyzing in like a month to see where you're at. And if you could play around with maybe reducing, you know, your overall fat intake, but be really careful because you don't want to just be eating less and less and less and see your metabolism slow. And then you're just like kind of in a confused, bad state. So I really wish I had better advice for you. I know that, but we are going through something very similar to you. We're, we're all in this together because you're experiencing weight gain going to carnivore. And I think that that is your body saying like, I need time to heal. And so I think listen to it and your body will, if you're not just going to continue to gain weight, I pro- I can promise you that I can promise you that. But once you get to a body where you a uh, place where your body has healed, you're going to see it level off. And I think it's going to be easier to shed the weight once your body has kind of healed and, and recovered. And so that's something that we're, experiencing right now is we have to increase our calories and it is very uncomfortable that we are going to see weight gain. Like I struggle with this every single day mentally, but we need to realize that our metabolism will adjust eventually. And when our hormones are at a better place, we're going to be functioning better and it's going to be much easier to lose weight. I think she was just giving herself a pep talk. I did. I was talking to myself. Yeah. Uh (laughs) Do you have a list of local farms that you support? If you're local to us, yes, um, we can share those with you. Hit us up on Instagram Messenger. If you're in central Illinois, we'll let you know where all of our, our, our good farmers are, okay? So Otherwise, online, we always suggest people to go to eatwell.com or localharvest.org, and that's going to really help you find a local farmer to you or order from places like White Oak Pastures. Um, what's the other one? Elder Springs Ranch is a good yeah. one. Um, White Oak Pastures is going to be probably your best bet. They have optimized their shipping. And so if you if your order is over $100, it's only $10 for shipping. Okay. Yep. Um, thank you to all the moderators. I see you're, you're doing your work. Um, oh, okay. Are you girls Christians or believe in a higher power? This is a great question. Um, we were not raised in a religious family. 
And so we weren't raised going to church every week um, or praying before meals, but that does not mean that we don't believe in a higher power and like a greater purpose. We just don't really have much structure around it. And I think that that's okay. Yeah. So our dad always would just teach us um, like morals and having good morals and doing good things um, for others. But that sounds weird now that I say it, but just being a good person. And then it's this whole Pascal's major thing. So like if there is a, I always get this wrong, but if there is a God, you got it. I'm going to, if there is a God and you believe in say whatever your God looks like, if there is whatever that is and you believe you lived a good life, you will be rewarded and you lived a good life. If there isn't one and you believe with good morals, you still lived a good life. If there, does that make sense? Yeah. And then the last one is if there is one and you don't believe, then you will be punished and you may not live the good life. Ultimately, it was to have good morals and be a good person and contribute to society. And so that's how we were raised. Um, that's our main focus. That's our main focus. And that you guys clearly just saw that I struggle with that. So, like, meaning, like, explaining it. That's why I need my dad to be there for my kids. <laughs> um, are you worried the autoimmune symptoms might reoccur? So we talked about that a little bit. Personally, I am not anymore. I've done a lot of analyzing what we used to eat versus what we are e eating now. So flashback a few years ago, we were eating... Um, a lot of vegetables. So we were very much plant-based and we were relying on like cruciferous vegetables, a lot of green vegetables. And we personally feel like those have the highest level of anti-nutrients and toxins. Plus we didn't have that animal meat and that we were very much like almost vegan, vegan. We would incorporate eggs and egg whites. Egg whites would be our main source of protein. And so I think we have completely flipped how we approach now a more balanced diet with the produce. We are animal based. And I think that for that reason, plus the carbs that we're including are very low toxin with low amount of anti-nutrients. That combination, I think that we are setting us up for success. Can we pause and get dunks? Yeah, we're gonna take a break from the questions. No, no, I'm not breaking, but Marcia, come here. We're gonna, no, let's show Marshmallow on her, um, on her throat. All right, carrying the camera, you got it. So, hello, it is me. My name is Marshmallow, and I am resting on my throne. So, this is her on her throne. Okay. And Gus Man, G Man wants to say hello. Gus, you want to say hi? <laughs> and then, of course, Nelly, Angel Mama, Angel Baby. Nelly, come say hi. There you go. Okay. Back to the questions. Okay. I, I think we lost where we were, of course. Oops. Still learning where to look. <laughs> okay. Oh, this sounds good. I'm excited for this one. How are you going to apply mechanical engineering to regenerative farming? So this is for Ashley. She's getting her PhD in Mech E. Mm, sorry, I'm cutting off my head. She doesn't like when I cut off her high pony, but then I have to contort myself. Yeah, so in grad school, I really think that you learn a way to think. Um, and then you can apply those thinking skills to other problems or challenges that you face. And so going, my research is definitely focused on regenerative medicine. So bio 3d printing. And so regenerating new tissues, engineered tissues. And so I think I'd like to say I'm going from like, I'm going to apply my regenerative medicine, like knowledge and thinking to regenerative agriculture so that I can regenerate and add health back into the soil. How that will look, stay tuned, continue to follow our journey. I promise you all we will document it, but I'm very excited. So you guys are gonna get a sneak peek at an idea that we have. No. No? No. What no. idea? Never mind. Oh, the drone? Never mind. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So one of our ideas for the future is to set up a drone that follows one. Of I our would I would code up the drone because I like to code and oh, I don't know how to. Do drones that. are really cool and drones require like con uh, control theory and feedback loops and like that's my jam. So I'm gonna code up a drone to tr we're gonna have a, a cow a, our farm's like mascot cow. The drone is gonna track the cow's eyes and just like chill in front of the cow all day and so you guys are going to be able to spend a day in the life of the cow so like instead of tuning into like us on a live you'll be able to tune into the cow what do you think how do you like what it do you, what, do, what you think? do you think huh okay so joanna do you think that a physique bikini competition is a good goal for a person who needs to lose 70 plus pounds i would say um 
Mm. It's tough. It will help you lose weight, but it may lead you to a bad place with how you feel about food and your body because you might get to this really low body fat percentage. And then once you're done dieting, you have to go back to a healthy body fat and you could have this new skewed view of what your body's meant to look like. I've definitely been experiencing that the last year of my life, putting on 15 pounds from when I competed and it is a struggle. So I would definitely get to a healthy body weight first Get really comfortable with where you are there and really love yourself and then try. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. Um, what are your plans for gaining farming experience before starting your own farm? That's a good question. So I spent a lot of time last summer interning at a interning at a farm in Indiana and we became really close friends with this um, man and his family. He's awesome. He's taught us a lot. And so I'll probably just go back once she graduates, we'll just go back to hang out with him a lot. Um, and we're going to pair with him and get something started for the Midwest. So that's most of our plans. Um, all of our free time is spent researching it. Plus, I am the type of person that I learn best when I dive straight into a problem. And so I'm like, I'm, I don't want to hold back with fears about like, I don't know what I'm doing. I think I learn best by failing and experiencing firsthand. Uh huh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have any of y'all met Tobias cousin? Tobias cousin. Where's, Where's Tobias, Tobias cousin? cousin? Oh, he's back in town. <laughs> he did. He did the two week social distancing. Mm. So he said, "I don't got Corona." But uh -huh. He's back in town. Yeah, huh? I don't see him. Okay. Okay. Where's Tobias uh -huh. cousin? Okay. Um. Do you do 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 do? I'm sorry, we're getting Ooh, there. There it is. Ooh, there it is. So you guys have a motorboat negative. Oh my gosh. Is that I don't know. I don't know. Like I don't know. If that's inappropriate, I'm sorry, I'm missing the <laughs> question. I have a very innocent brain. Um, okay, that's a good question. That I mean that is a question. What? Why were you doing the cut just before your conversion? So we were in a caloric surplus all of last year, bulking on a carnivore diet, and then we shifted to a cut in February of this year, and we're on a cut for a few months. And the initial reason for a cut, we still can't say, I think it's been postponed, um, but we needed to be kind of lean for, the, for it. But it was the best thing that we've ever done because us going into that cut, we cut our macros, we continued to cut our macros, we continued to cut our macros, and we were eating about 800 calories less per day than what we were eating last year, and we still weren't losing weight so that was a sign like your hormones are number one priority and you need to fix those. And so while the cut failed, definitely failed, we failed. It was a blessing in disguise because it made us wake the up and say, it's time to heal the hormones. So here we are on our healing journey. And instead we are now very much in a surplus back out of this cut. And honestly, like if we were projecting into the future, um, our main goal is going to be to gain weight and heal amenorrhea. When we get to a place where our hormones are at a better place, we get our period back. It'll be a lot easier to cut and we're not going to get like super shredded or like, I don't think that that's what our bodies no, really need really after this again. journey, but no, no I want to find a balance in my life. Yes. A balance. That's what I'm, I'm done with being like, I need to be super lean. Like that's absolutely ridiculous. Stop. Yeah. Do you think your constipation is related to amenorrhea? Yeah, I do think it is playing a role. Um, after looking into metabolism and the thyroid, that goes into like every single function in your body. And so having messed up hormones is going to mess up everything. Yeah. So I 100% I think yes. Um, boop. It's one month into carnivore. So this person's one month into carnivore and the sugar cravings are hitting more recently. What fats might you recommend to reduce cravings? I love talking about animal fats. It's my favorite. All okay, right. So, but I don't think I don't think there's going to be a specific fat that's going to necessarily help you. I think it's going to be time. Oh, she's one month in. I was going to say time away really helps with food addiction. I would start experimenting. I would say your best bet is going to be raw Iberico pork fat. And so this is a fat from some special pigs. They're Iberico hogs, and they're a lot skinnier and less muscular. Sorry, they're not skinnier. They're less muscular than like the standard Berkshire heritage hogs, but they have a lot of fat on them and their fat is high in oleic acid. And so it kind of has like an olive oily taste and a light sweet taste. 
And so I really think you should try out some raw Iberico pork fat, and you can find that at White Oak Pastures. Link in our somewhere. Somewhere. Just, I, we're very bad at that. Mm -hmm. Okay. How do you address your way of eating around friends and social settings? So I'd say our way of eating is more mainstream now, but back when we were carnivore, um, it really helped to have each other, Yeah, I would say, but we've become so confident in our way of eating and our way of life that we just own it and owning it will make the entire situation less awkward because if you feel uncomfortable, you're going to think the other person's judging you and ultimately like at the end of the day, it's how you eat. It doesn't matter what anybody thinks. I know that's a lot easier said than done. So we, if we flash back a few years ago though, we weren't active on social media. So we definitely yeah. like hid this from our family and friends. Yeah. And so that made living out this lifestyle more challenging because we had to like live it in private and secret. And so when we would go out, it would be super weird. Yeah. But now that we share it everywhere, everyone that we interact with knows like, oh, and they're so supportive of it. So I found that when I was on a carnivore diet, last year strict carnivore diet last year and i went to like a bachelorette party for example like my friends were like hey like is there any way like i can make sure that i accommodate you and so just being upfront and honest is the best way to go about it rather than trying to hide it we actually have a video it's like called four mindset tips for mindset tips for um carnivore or so it's something like that check that one out that should address that question more in yeah. And guys, we're running on 57 minutes, so we're going to stay on for about three more minutes. Oh, no, no, there's so many questions. We're going to have to do we'll this have again. To, we'll, we'll be back next week. We just we uh, got a busy day today, so we got to tune out after an hour. This is so much fun. You guys, send some ideas, by the way, whether that's here or somewhere, about what we can do for lives, because this is a lot of fun for us. Follow us on Instagram, strong.sistas, and send us an Instagram message with some ideas for YouTube lives. Yes. Um... Are you looking for backers when you start your farm? Hello, I am looking for eight figures. She just said it. She just did it. Yes, she just done it. <laughs> I mean, you asked. <laughs> um, boo. Guys, I'm like really hot right now. I'm like blushing and you make me nervous. Um, I'm trying. Oh, I love this. Mike, you, this is a great question. M M Mike, try 10 ketos. You're a good friend. We talk every day. What is your favorite thing about each dog? Good. All right. So Marshmallow the Queen, my favorite thing is that all she wants in life is human touch. All she wants is human touch. She could go, if she just got human touch all day, she would be the happiest dog ever. And She's like, a piece of Velcro. She is. All right. Now you do Nelly. Okay. So Nelly is this one, that one. Nelly is a German Shepherd. Um, she's the youngest, so I'm gonna bring it up to her. She, oh, she got excited. So she is seriously a ray of sunshine. She never has a bad day. Um, she teaches us every single day to enjoy and live in the moment and just be happy. So she literally is always down. She's always down. Like she will do anything at any given moment. Whereas Marshmallow is like, let me rest. And then our son, who's our firstborn, is Gus. He has taught us so much over the years. Um, he had really bad anxiety for his puppy years and switching to a full carnivore raw eating, it's right there, um, really helped his anxiety. I'm trying to get over there. Yeah, there you go. Really helped his anxiety. And now he's just, he's so gentle. Like he, our favorite thing about him is that he, what would you say? Bring it back up. All right, bringing it back up. This is a great view of me. Yeah. <laughs> that was a mess. Gus teaches me never go a day without telling someone that you love them. He tells me every single day that he loves me. And I think that that is something very powerful to learn from a dog. If right? you're wondering about the dynamics, though, we have Marshmallow up here, the queen. We have Nellie, who worked her way up to second. And then Gus is at the bottom of the totem pole man. Like, he struggles. He's got two ladies who rule his life. Yeah. Um, Chris and Michelle, we are going to be reaching out to you guys about those uh, accountant and construction plans. So stay tuned for that. Um, we're going to take one last question and then we're going to tune out for the day. So Sarah, pick the last oh, question. Okay, picking the last question. Just get to the question. Like there's a lot of comments. Um, somebody asked if we eat conventional ribeye steak. The answer is no, we do not support conventional farming. It is our preference. We That's why we want to be regenerative farmers because 
we've learned from so many farmers how beneficial it is to prioritize people who are healing the soil. So our answer is no. But I do have to give D Woods, he's one of my favorite commentators. I just messed that up completely. Some time with Marshmallow. So D Woods and Marshmallow are really good friends and he knows Marshmallow better than he you. knows Marshmallow well. So here you go, D Woods. I hope this is as relaxing to all of you as it is to D Woods. Marshmallow is a great Pyrenees border collie mix. She did not get any of the hair. She's roughly 75 pounds. She's single, but she's seeing a lot of boys at the dog park. So. Mm. Okay. You want to wrap it up? Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you so much for being so active and for helping us not make this YouTube live too awkward. We were probably a little bit awkward, but we're really excited. This was fun for us. We love interacting with you guys, especially during this quarantine time, because all we do is talk to each other. But yeah, yes. I want to make sure that these are more um, helpful and productive and that we can do things with you guys. So if you have any ideas of what we could do or like you send questions somewhere, we'll see. But we're going to plan to do this next Saturday as well. Yeah. Thank you guys again. And until next time, behave, behave like, like an angel, angel. I don't know how to end live stream. <laughs> It's probably going. Okay.